professional wrestling and Hollywood. It's a match made in heaven, at least on paper. There are obvious parallels to draw between both industries, and we've certainly seen plenty of crossovers, with wrestlers moving from the squared circle to the silver screen, several movies about wrestling, and the occasional A-list actor dipping his toe in the world of sports entertainment. Two worlds ruled by flamboyance, spectacle, and ego. Wrestling and movies are made for each other. Given the reach and impact of films on spectators, it should come as no surprise that various bone benders have looked to the talkies for inspiration when it comes to storylines or to help come up with a memorable character. Some of these creations have been subtle, with wrestlers perhaps picking one or two traits or distinct characteristics to help add to their own original inventions. Others, however, are quite simply lazy ripoffs designed to capitalize on a trend. A few of the gimmicks on this list are more slammy than Oscar worthy, and some of them are only worthy of our contempt, but a few of them are actually pretty decent and became their own identity to the point that comparisons to the film character they were emulating soon disappeared. I'm Duke Skycrawler from Cultaholic.com, and these are 10 wrestling gimmicks inspired by film characters. Join us! Number 10, Tyler Breeze, inspired by Derek Zoolander. The talented Matthias Clement had been languishing in WWE's developmental system for what must have felt like an age and was on the verge of facing the axe several times before coming up with a character that saved his career. While wrestling as Mike Dalton, Clement was given an ultimatum. Come up with something new or you'll be out of here, buster. Taking the warning to heart, he went away and came up with several different characters, filmed some videos and sent them along to upper management. One of them was a hit. Tyler Breeze, the self-obsessed male model who was infatuated with selfies and talked down to everyone he considered an uggo, kept him in the company. The character was in part inspired by some of the vain wannabes who would drop in and out of developmental, but also, of course, by Ben Stiller's Derek Zoolander, with a little bit of Dodgeball's White Goodman thrown in for good measure. Though not a direct imitation, there were noticeable similarities with Breeze and Zoolander, something that was highlighted when the sequel to the original film was released in 2016. His pouting, speech pattern, and other mannerisms were rather dead on, but to be fair to Breeze, he made the character his own and evolved it over time. Number 9, Paul Burchill, inspired by Captain Jack Sparrow. One of the UK's standout independent wrestlers, Paul Burchill was signed by WWE in 2005 and made his TV debut in the summer as the new tag team partner of William Regal. Tall, muscular, and incredibly agile for a man of his size, Burchill had plenty of the tools needed to make it in the big time. Under the tutelage of one of the greats, Burchill was only going to get better as time went on. And then they made him a pirate. According to the man himself, Vince McMahon called him into a meeting one day and told him that he was going to be a character very similar to Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. Burchill's new look was certainly reminiscent of Johnny Depp's creation, itself an impersonation of Rolling Stone and legendary wild man Keith Richards. Making his entrance by swinging into the arena on a rope and carrying a giant sword to the ring, Pirate Paul Burchill was a kid-friendly gimmick and got over quickly. Just as soon as it began, however, it was over. Due to injuries suffered by Burchill, as well as creative indifference and possibly a legal letter from a certain powerful mouse, the run only lasted about six months in total before rehab and a subsequent repackaging for the swashbuckling Brit. Number 8, Waylon Mercy, inspired by Max Cady. Another short-lived persona inspired by the big screen, Waylon Mercy was the last gimmick of veteran journeyman Dan Spivey. One of the darker characters of the new generation era, Mercy was an almost mirror image of Max Cady, a menacing turn from Robert De Niro in Martin Scorsese's 91 remake of Cape Fear. He had the slicked jet back hair, the old tattoos, and wore white with Hawaiian shirts. Like Cady, Waylon Mercy portrayed himself to be an upstanding gentleman unless he encountered someone he had a problem with. For Mercy, that meant acting like a babyface before the bell, complete with waving to the fans and shaking the referee's hand, before transforming into a vicious villain once the match was underway. It was certainly an interesting concept, and the character had a bit of steam, but unfortunately Spivey was forced to retire due to injury before it could reach its full potential. However, the character did take on a new life in the form of Bray Wyatt. Spivey actually helped Wyatt, who is the son of Spivey's former US Express tag partner, Mike Rotunda, to develop the character. There are clear resemblances, but it's safe to say that Bray has taken the character in many weird and wonderful directions since. Number 7, Kazushka Okada, inspired by Kato. 
There's dropping the ball, and then there's taking a once-in-a-generation talent, saddling him with a slightly racist gimmick based on an upcoming film that will bomb with critics and at the box office, before confining him to a show that nobody watches. That was the story of Kazushka Okada in TNA. Now widely considered to be one of the top pro wrestlers on the planet, Okada was renamed Okato and given a gimmick that was pretty much a direct ripoff of Kato from the Green Hornet series. And wouldn't you know it, the character debuted right around the time that the Seth Rogen starring Green Hornet film arrived in theaters. Never mind that the character Kato was Chinese and famously played on television by Bruce Lee, or that Okada had been sent to TNA by New Japan because he was being primed for a main event role upon his return to the Orient. Indeed, Okada as the Rainmaker has cemented his legacy of one of New Japan's best ever, putting his short and unproductive time in the US far behind him. New Japan top brass were supposedly so angry at how TNA treated their prospect that they refused to work with the company until they eventually received an apology. Number 6. Kane, inspired by Michael Myers Glenn Jacobs had to endure a couple of potentially career-ending duds before he found the guys that would make the mayor of Knox County a worldwide superstar. Evil Dentist and Fake Diesel didn't exactly set the world on fire, no pun intended, but another outlandish creation did. Enter Kane, the mysterious younger brother of The Undertaker, whom Taker believed to have died in a fire at the family funeral home when they were children, was ticked to the top. The Big Red Machine would debut and feud with The Undertaker, proving to have incredible longevity as he still makes appearances today when he's not filling tax reports or cutting ribbons on a new library or whatever it is that mayors do. Though the characters changed considerably over time, the original inspiration for the gimmick was the fictional serial killer of the Halloween films, Michael Myers. It was Jim Cornette, who had worked with Jacobs previously in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, that pitched the masked, almost inhuman Kane character. The style of the mask and attire may have been different, but you can certainly see a lot of the slasher movie icon in the early days of the devil's favorite demon. Number 5. Sting, inspired by Eric Draven one of WCW's top stars from the late 80s to the mid 90s, Sting stood out thanks to not only his athletic prowess and charisma, but also thanks to his vibrant neon soaked outfits and face paint. To do a complete 180 of that in 1996 and exchange the bright blues, yellows and reds for an all black and white ensemble while ditching the bleach blonde flat top for long scraggly brown locks was quite the risk, but something that Steve Borden understood he had to do in order to keep up with a business that was changing rapidly. Waging war against the NWO, the new look Sting would watch from the rafters and drop in from time to time to deck someone with his trusty baseball bat like some kind of emo vigilante. The new look and persona were inspired by cult classic The Crow, specifically the hero of the film, Eric Draven. Sting later admitted that the idea was pitched to him by Scott Hall, who himself was no stranger to nicking ideas from successful movies, but more on that later. The change did sting the world of good, of course, as he became the company's hottest babyface star by doing very little and has maintained the look to this day. Number 4. The Legion of Doom, inspired by Mad Max WWE fans may know them as the Legion of Doom, but before Hawk and Animal rolled their Harleys into Titan Towers, wrestling fans the world over recognized them as the Road Warriors. A force to be reckoned with, the Road Warriors made their reputations with help from their superhuman physiques, explosive offense, and the fact that they rarely got beat. A big part of their act was also their appearance. You don't tend to forget two massive blokes who have their faces painted, heads shaved save for a few choice places, and are wearing giant shoulder pads with massive spikes sticking out of them. The impressive look was quite clearly inspired by the Mad Max series of films, specifically the evil mohawked Wes from Mad Max 2, which, wouldn't you know it, was distributed internationally as the Road Warrior. A creation of Dusty Rhodes and Cowboy Bill Watts, the Road Warriors have to go down as one of the most successful wrestling acts to be inspired by a major motion picture. The American Dream was actually something of a Mad Max superfan and would routinely look to it for inspiration, with things like the Chamber of Horrors and War Games drawing from the Thunderdome in the third film of the series. Number 3. Edge, inspired by Blade It's hard to imagine someone as creative as Edge doing something derivative, but we all have to start somewhere, don't we? The Rated R Superstar's early days in WWE saw him portray a mysterious loner who barely spoke and wore a long black trench coat and sunglasses. Anyone who was around in the summer of 1998 would have noticed that he was dressed rather like the titular character of Blade, the Wesley Snipes starring smash hit vampire film. 
Edge would naturally go and feud with another blood-sucking character, Gangrel, before he and his kayfabe brother Christian joined him to form the Brood. Though Edge would soon move on to bigger and better things, it was hard to avoid making the comparison at the time, since promotion for the blockbuster was in full swing, and the connections to WWE don't stop there. Triple H would actually land a small role in the sequel, 2003's Blade Trinity. Though his performance as Jarko Grimwood may have escaped the attention of the Academy, the game did win Best Fight Scene at the 2003 Pachitis, which is sort of like the Oscars, but for people who respect this damn business. Number 2, Dean Malenko, inspired by James Bond. Of all the members of the Radicals, it's been said that WWE saw the least upside in Dean Malenko, who, to be fair, had enjoyed a long and successful career before making it to the company. As the methodical and technically sound man of a thousand holds, Malenko won titles and admiration in Japan, ECW, and WCW before jumping ship. His WWE career can be considered a letdown, but WWE did try to do something different with him, taking their cues from a heralded film franchise. Dubbed Double Ho 7 by The Godfather, Malenko became a ladies' man in the vein of everyone's favorite secret agent slash misogynist, James Bond, complete with new valets, catchy music, and a feud with Lita who became the object of his affections. Per his new Titantron video, Malenko now stood for Magnificent, Arousing, Lovable, Exciting, Notorious, Kinky, Outstanding. All perfect words to describe somebody who looked more like a building site foreman than Roger Moore or Pierce Brosnan. Yes, the new character was played very much for laughs, as Malenko was emasculated at every turn and after the storyline with Lita came to an end, he quietly slipped down the card before becoming a backstage road agent. Or so MI6 would have us believe. Number 1. Razor Ramon, inspired by Tony Montana Scott Hall had bounced around various territories under different names, including winners like Coyote Starship and The Diamond Stud, before landing a gig with WWE in 1992. Vince McMahon had originally brought him in with the idea of making him a G.I. Joe type character, sure to be another rousing success for Hall. But when their meeting was over, he had another completely different gimmick to sink his teeth into. Hall had pitched the idea of a character similar to Al Pacino's Tony Montana from Scarface, going so far as to directly quote lines of dialogue and suggest scenarios from the 1984 crime classic in an effort to convince. Vince and Pat Patterson, who had never actually seen the film because both men live inside of giant bubbles which they only leave in order to sleep the two hours a day that they're not working, thought it was genius, and thus Razor Ramon was born. One of the staples of WWE's new generation era, Razor Ramon was a huge success, and while the PG rating of WWE programming prohibited the bad guy from snorting a mountain of coke or peppering a gang of toughs with a machine gun, the muse for the gimmick was there for all to see. 